Hello, my friend. Today we're going to talk about how stock options work. We're going to start out by reviewing some of the terminology commonly used in the industry to talk about options. For example, uh, a definition of options is it's a contract that gives the holder uh, the right but not the obligation to buy or sell a security in the future for a specific period of time. Now, uh, the one that buys the option is said to be the option holder. There's another party that is the, uh, the guy that sells the option, which is the one that writes the option is said. And that person uh, has the obligation to buy or sell the security in the future if the holder chooses to do it. Of course, if, if you buy a, an option to purchase, then uh, you have the, uh, the, the right to, to purchase it in the future up at a price. But if the price of that security has gone down, you're not gonna exercise it because you could buy it in the market lower, right? But if the price has gone up and you have the right to purchase it at a lower price, you're gonna do it and then you're gonna profit it. You might sell it you know, immediately and make a profit there. So uh, <clears throat> let's go for uh, the specific uh, uh, features that the options have. They normally, uh, for this uh, contract to, to, to uh, work, you, you, you have to pay a premium to have the right. Okay, that premium is a function of the time involved. So if you're buying a, an option for just 30 days, it's gonna cost less than if you're buying an option for the same strike price and, and security and what have you for a longer period, say three months or a year or six months, whatever. Also, uh, if there's volatility in the market, that tends to increase slightly the premium on options. Um, and, uh, if there is uh, intrinsic value inside the option. Uh, intrinsic value is the difference between the market price of the security selling and the strike price or the price that the option uh, is gonna be executed at. So uh, to a lesser degree also, uh, the level of interest rates impact the premium. So the premium uh, can change from time to time on the same security for the same period, uh, depending on on the things that we discussed, the volatility and the interest rates and what have you. So, okay, uh, if you buy an option to purchase a security in the future at a specific strike price, say $10, and that security goes to uh, $12, then you made $2, right? But uh, you also have to consider the premium that you paid out. If, if it costs you a dollar, uh, to buy that option, then you really didn't make two dollars. You just made one It's important uh, in order to understand this to look at a, a, a chart uh, A call option is an option to call a security. It's, it's the same as a purchase An option to purchase a security you could uh, do it on individual stocks or you can also do it on the index on the ETF or the index they have a lot of uh, options traded. So let's talk about the call option. The call option has a strike, right? If the price increases, then the option uh, value goes up because you can, you can purchase it at this fixed price anytime in the future up to the expiration date. So if the, if the price of the security goes down, you're gonna lose money all the way up to the cost of the premium. It's not an unlimited uh, loss, but just limited to the cost of the premium. And going up, the possibility of profit is, is infinite in theory, right? Uh, so uh, it's not limited by, by anything except the market price. So the, the, you can see that the cost of the premium is gonna automatically give you a loss, assuming this uh, option was purchased at the money, which is at the same strike price as the market price, then you would have a loss, if it stays there, of the premium you paid. 
that's, that's understandable, right? So <clears throat> what happens to the other side? Uh, the person who sell, sold you the option, they make some money up front, which is the premium that they received. And if the security price goes down, then they make money. They, they, keep, they get to keep the option and they don't have to purchase the security because you're not gonna execute it at, the holder is not gonna execute it at the strike price, which is higher than the, than the market price at that point. So it, he will make money if the security goes down, the one that sells the call or writes it. Uh, con conversely, if the price goes up, he's gonna be, start losing money, but he won't start losing money until the premium that he received is exhausted. Now the premium prices uh, could be anywhere from two to 3% of the, of, the, of the price of a stock for one month. Uh, for two or three months, it's higher. So uh, as, the, um, as the time passes uh, and uh, you get closer to the expiration, uh, the option loses uh, you know, value, it loses the premium. So you don't have to hold an option position to maturity. You could buy it today and sell it a week from now before the maturity, if, if the termination uh, of the time is in a month, uh, you would still get some of your premium back. And if, if the market moved in your favor, then uh, you made some money. Uh, now, uh, options are bought and sold based on the bid ask uh, and that, bid ask has a spread. The spread is uh, narrowest, uh, closer to the expiration and uh, on higher volume securities. So if you hold a security that is not uh, readily tradable, uh, you might have to pay a little bit more to get in and get out if you do that. If you hold it to uh, the maturity, then uh, you don't have to pay anything. This, this, the exchange would uh, would give you the shares if you if you bought a call uh, and and you were in the money uh, when you're when the when the price is moving in your favor uh, you're said to be in the money if uh, if the if the, if the price is moving against you then the start the option is said to be out of the money now uh, you can also buy and sell options. Uh, to sell uh, securities. For example, if you buy a put, you're, you're betting that the price is going to drop. So what happens? Uh, you, you pay a premium, so you have a loss already of the size of the premium. Uh, and you also have to, to pay for the dividends of that stock. So that increases the cost of your premium. So let's assume that the uh, stock went in the right direction for you, it went down. Uh, you will start making money if it goes sufficiently down prior to its expiration. If it goes up, then no harm done. You don't lose anything except for your premium, but you don't gain anything either. So um, it's not good to buy a put and then just have your the security go up. Unless you're hedging a position and. And that's a, a legitimate reason for trading options. The other guy that uh, is in the other side that sells the put, his position will be, well, he will make the premium and part of that premium will include uh, the dividends. The, that's very important to know that. So a lot of people will think, well, I'll just buy the security and, and buy a put so that I capture the dividend and then I'll, I won't have a loss. No, it doesn't work that way because the, the dividend is already included there. So if you, if you write the put, then if the price uh, uh, goes down, then you're gonna lose money because you will be forced to purchase from the, from the holder of the option, the security at the strike price, which would be higher than, than the market price if it, if it went down. If the price goes up, then you're free and clear and you can keep uh, the option, the, uh, the premium forever. Uh, now, uh, <clears throat> let's see, um, this uh, option 
options are not meant for speculation, although a lot of people uh, use them for that. They just, you know, bet uh, that the uh, certain security is going to go up or down. Uh, options have legitimate reasons uh, for hedging and for other purposes, which we'll go uh, into in a future video. Um, but just know that if you use them for speculation, it's, it's like market timing. You know, you're just gambling, uh, betting that the, that the security is going to go up or down. You know, that's, uh, it's not easy to do. Uh, it's very hard. Uh, if you do it successfully, you make a lot of money, but you will not be able to do it consistently. Um, you know, in future videos, we're going to talk about combinations of options. You know, if you buy one option and sell another one, and if you buy two, uh, you know, uh, these combinations are called collars, for example, or spreads or straddles. Uh, there's a, there's a, a, a lot of combinations that can be done with options that uh, are very interesting because they can uh, reduce the risk if you have a position and hedge it. You know, uh, it's a very fascinating subject, the subject of options, but it's not for everybody. Uh, most people that are just saving for their retirement in a 401k can be very successful without ever knowing that options exist. Uh, they are, uh, you know, they are, you know, part of the complex uh, set of tools that are out there for the investors. Uh, the important thing is for you not to uh, think that just because it's available, you have to use it. You don't. All right. I hope this video was useful to you. I ask you that if you liked it, please share it with somebody that you think is going to take advantage of it. Uh, you know, I give you my thoughts and opinions just for your information uh, and for your benefit. They're not meant as specific recommendations for you to trade on them. Um, I thank you for watching. I remind you that uh, past performance is never a guarantee of future results and that investing involves risk you could lose money. Uh, wish you the best, my friend. Be well.